Hello and welcome to Good For You. Good for you, man. Good for you. Good for you. Good for you, the podcast about the things we ghosted, the purchases that haunt us, the best products, services, and industry happenings in the wellness, well-being, and spiritual space. We're going to give you a healthy little dose of fun. We're going to talk about the things that are happening in pop culture, the ones that got away, the things in our cart that are haunting us or ghosting us, our strong opinions that are loosely held. <laughs> we like to call this the Grex. The group text. The group text in your ear. So come say hello. Join us in the audio Grex, where friends don't let friends get, get scammed. scammed. Hi, Michelle. How are you doing? Post long weekend. We survived. We drove on the freeway because we had car trouble. We were in Yosemite for a friend's wedding and our car started making like a thump, 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 thump noise. And so scary. It was really scary. We stopped on Sunday at a tire place when we started driving. And they were like, mm, either your tires are, un are unaligned or your axle's broken. So anyways, bye. And there's no one who can fix it. We we're like, what are we going to do? So we drove 50 miles an hour <laughs> down the freeway with our hazards on back to LA from Yosemite. It was a harrowing experience, but we made it. How was your weekend? Nothing compared to that. <laughs> it was very chill. I swam in a pond upstate. Ooh. It was nice. I don't know. Rustic. Last time I yeah. Very rustic weekend. I chased some cows. Wait, what? <laughs> uh, so I chased some cows off the property of where we were staying. Is this a weird hazing ritual? I know you were visiting your boyfriend's parents. Are they like testing you to see if you're good breeding material? Actually, there was one moment where, so usually his dad will chase the cows away because they're from a nearby dairy farm. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, of course... I'm like, oh, so cute. Why can't we just leave them <laughs> grazing? Because they actually become terrors and just eat everything. And they also drink from the pond and you just can't have them roaming. And they poop everywhere. That's true. No matter how sturdy your land is, they're going to come and fuck it up. So they have all these potholes all over their grass that you could easily break your ankle in. Cow divot. Yes, yes. And it, it's a very beautiful property. But the cows, which I thought were a great feature... <laughs> are not welcomed on the property. So his dad usually chases them off, I think. At one point on the second to last day that we were there, my boyfriend's mom came out and was like, all right, Josh, it's your turn to chase the cows. So I end up going with him and we end up chasing, running across the street. You always have running shoes on. <laughs> I did. I had a skirt on. I was ready. I was playing bocce ball. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to run, but we were totally winded after. But now I'm also into this idea of chasing them. <laughs> so yeah, I chased some cows this weekend and I feel it in the calves. That seems like a great sort of like child labor yeah. <laughs> job. Do you know what I mean? Like if you had children, be like, go chase the cows. You make a great game of it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think that's the trick to just making kids do anything is like pr just pretend it's a game. Or adults. Or I was going to say, or boyfriends. <laughs> this weekend I used my, my UV sunscreen dots because we were driving and I love Ethan so much, but man, that man already has brain cancer and he is a prime target for skin cancer because he has blue eyes and red hair and extremely fair skin, but he hates putting on sunscreen. So I was like, okay, listen. You can put on as little sunscreen as you want, but you have to put on this dot. And as soon as the dot turns purple, you need to put the sunscreen back on. He has never once reapplied in the time that I've known him. And he reapplied and he was happy to do it. And I was like, oh my God. How long did it take? Honestly, it probably took like three hours because we were driving. So okay. it was pretty good, but I was impressed. Are you bringing these UV dots to Italia? Oh, I want to get them in bulk now. I want to invest in this company. I'm so excited. I was out with a bunch of people because I was at a wedding and I was wearing one of them because we had a barbecue and everyone came up to me and they were like, what is that? What's that? Because it turns purple. It's like, oh, it's a UV dot. It tells you when you have sunscreen. People were ordering it as they were sitting, standing in front of me. They were like, what's it called? And then they like pull it up on Amazon. And I was like, okay, I do feel like an influencer right now. This is pretty cool. But I'm like, yeah. do we have their affiliate? Uh, <laughs> I know. I was like, wait, let me send you a link. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait, wait, wait. Can you no, actually go to our shop uh, list? My Instagram bio. <laughs> Hold on. You know, I've been much better at wearing sunscreen on my face, body. I'm still working on. And I feel like nothing works for my nose. It's a lost cause. Really? You might have to go full zinc. What is the name of this company? Okay. The dots are called Spot My UV. 
UV detection mm. stickers, and they are fabulous. And we don't think this is a scam. No, I don't think it is. But you know what it does make me want to buy? SPF hat. No, more than that. It's basically just a full face mask. Like, <laughs> speaking of nose, there are these patches that you can put on your nose if you're like a golfer that are opaque. And it's kind of like a bandage almost that's skin colored. But they also can go under your eyes. You know how football players will put the black, like, mm -hmm. black paint under their eyes? So you can get this and it's like super UV protectant. <laughs> I'm kind of like, I want that. It will look ridiculous. You can actually get a full face mask of this stuff and just like slap it on your face instead of wearing sunscreen. In LA, I do see a lot of Korean women in Griffith Park. They have the hat with the full curtain that goes under your eyes. I think that's the myth. Well, I, I feel like it would be hot. But like it's not then on your skin like a sticker. I kind of feel like the sticker might be comfortable. Like you could swim with the sticker it's on. Because you want to be held in. You just want a full on mask that is <laughs> I, pulling I up the chin. Love, it's ice. Love. It's made of ice. <laughs> okay. So that's the other thing. Yeah. It's like aloe. It's like a skincare product at the same time. So I'm like, uh, okay, it's moisturizing and it's protecting my skin and I could swim with it. Oh, it's like the neck hammock, but full yeah. face. Yeah, exactly. It, or like you could play tennis with it. It's, it's like made for athletics. It's made for, you know, bopping around. What do they look like? They look kind of weird, but also not weird enough that I'm like, I'll never wear that. I was just thinking like people wear star face on their pimples. That's cool. That's now, what if I made this thing? You know, have you seen anyone wear them in real life? I've only seen people on Instagram wear them. Yeah, I feel like I have no shade. I just truly haven't ever seen people wear them IRL. I feel like I have. Okay. I was, I mean, I was talking to Chelsea about this who was our guest two episodes ago, because I really think that she should start this business. <laughs> I was like, I'll invest in it. If you start this as a business and you, you star face like these stickers, you make them cool and aesthetic, I will 100% invest. And if there's some way that you can make them recyclable so that they're not single use, even better. Also a great way to go incognito. I don't want people to perceive me. <laughs> you have no idea who exactly. I really am. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm extremely confused. You're confused. I'm fucking confused, bro. New York Times is back at it again. It's tough to keep voting for this paper with my wallet, and yet I am. You know, recently I have a new gripe with them, so this is now turning into the New York Times gripe section. <laughs> we also decided that we have a shit list and the New York Times is on it. We will update it accordingly. They're number one on our shit list for right now. Yes, amidst the chaos of last week, I received an alert. I don't have many push notifications on my phone. I've pretty much re removed all of them because, you know, a gal with ADHD has to do what she can. Oh, I thought it was because you wanted to be unreachable. That just happens naturally. <laughs> don't need the not notifications for that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Anyways, I received a push notification from the New York Times and I just had to screenshot it and send it to Michelle because, you know, amidst everything that was happening, the New York Times felt the need to send a push notification that Sunny... How do you say his name? Barger? Mm -hmm. Sure. Whatever. The face of the Hells Angels has died at 83. He turned a small gang of outlaw bikers into an international brand. The <laughs> hashtag <laughs> boy boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is part of our ongoing series of also <laughs> hashtag boy boss awards. Goes to Sonny Barger, the ultimate marketer of the Hells Angels, apparently. <laughs> really growth marketer, man. Just like <laughs> he was into branding. He was super into community. And look at this gigantic business that he's built over the last few years. Let's just take a moment of silence for him. I actually don't know very much about him, but just on principle, it's like this is pretty fucked up. Yeah. So, you know, I just think it's hilarious that like this guy gets this push notification. And <laughs> if Emily Weiss does one thing, they're like, mm. cursed girl boss Emily Weiss gets booted from Glossier after taking the company down a horrible path and effectively destroying the lives of millions with her horrible skincare and makeup. And it's like, OK, listen, calm down. More proof that women should just stay home and make babies and not try and do anything else. Or perhaps create a gang of murderers, rapists, and thieves. International. Int Maybe you'll get rewarded. Maybe. Just then. I don't know. There's really no way to win. No, not. Well, the New York Times continues to shock and disappoint. They have some gems still, some hopes. There was a good opinion piece this week around why we should have enthusiasm for America as liberal Democrats. Ooh. Like we need to reclaim patriotism and like fight for the America we believe in. I was like, all right. Okay. I'll, I'll consider it. That. 
I'll consider it. I'm not full send, but like, let me put that in my pipe and smoke it. Okay. Send it my way. I'm curious. I read a good opinion piece on the Republican war on sex, and it's all about embracing pleasure and sex and that ultimately deep misogyny doesn't want women to have sex on their own terms. Surprise. I mean, speaking of sex and pleasure, we have a interesting discussion on good for who? Good for who? Good for who? Good for you, man. Good for you. Good for you. Jessica Defino, friend of the pod. If you don't subscribe to her newsletter, oof, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? Get on it. Seriously, honestly, one of the best ones I subscribe to. Me too. The unpublishable. And what I like about it is I don't agree with everything she says. Oh, yeah. I'll say it. I actually disagree with a lot of what she says, but I think that she brings up excellent points and she's a really good writer. And she just had an article about where the fuck are all of the sex positive sort of quote unquote wellness brands and why aren't they talking about what's happening with Roe v. Wade? Suspiciously absent. Who does she reference? Well, she referenced Moon Juice, which has Uh, a yoni oil. They didn't post about it? They did not. Not on the main feed. But I was thinking about other brands that came to mind for me, and one was Foria Wellness. Do you know Foria? They're like CBD, THC, yes. maybe like sex oil. Gave me a yeast infection. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, actually, I wanted to love it, but my body said no. I don't really like their their ad copy that they have on podcasts. It's a little bit disgusting to me. It's like, I don't like it. But the other brand I was thinking of was Love Wellness, which is started by Lo Bosworth. That is women's health and like UTI, yeast infection. It started as a company that like did that. And now they're all into like women's supplements and women's healthcare. And none of them posted anything on their feeds. Rude. I mean, I felt like... I kind of felt like, oh, should I be so upset? I don't know. Maybe not. They're just brands. No comment is certainly a comment. People always think, oh, not saying anything is neutral. It's absolutely not neutral. <laughs> well, I mean, at first I was just like, oh, maybe I'm just being hard on them because they're brands. Everyone should be hard on them. <laughs> right. But like on holisticism, we posted something on stories, but we didn't. I don't think we posted anything on the main feed. You know, that's fair. It's interesting of like, what do we expect from different brands for different reasons. I think because those brands so directly deal with women's reproductive systems and organs or not exclusively for women, but... Well, I mean, like these brands in particular, yeah, they have like specific products that, Mm -hmm. I don't know, if you're going to platform yourself on female empowerment and sexual wellness and use the word yoni in your marketing, then I feel like you kind of have to say something, right? Yeah. It also just feels like an... This is not tough stuff guys (laughs) (laughs) i did a quick google on mode to see what they wrote and Mm -hmm. they did a little you know whatever post i also checked goop's instagram they did like a link in bio to donate and posted a quote there was a lot of quote posting dame did yeah they had a really nice post we love dame yeah yeah i mean i think if you're like truly making products and trying to market them to people who have vaginas and saying like this is the purposes for wellness pleasure freedom personal sovereignty then yeah you have like a duty to say something (sighs) yoni steam more like yoni scream am i right i hate the word yoni though yeah no who says that it's an immediate red flag for me when someone talks about their yoni i'm like okay that's cool for you but it's not cool for me and i don't like it i've never heard someone use it in a sentence oh my gosh dude you haven't gone to how have you gone to topanga like that's all everyone is talking about like yoni energy (laughs) it's not for me but also i think this is a personal hang-up because i thought for like a very long time that vagina was vagina like (laughs) (laughs) so endearing your parents were probably like we are not correcting her (laughs) no it was like till i was old (laughs) like it was like i want to say that and shit i did not know how to spell i thought shit was spelled (laughs) c-h-i-t wait what age give us a ballpark age like 13 or 14 (laughs) i just didn't think like i've never seen it written out how can you get away with vagina for 13 years (laughs) i never said it was it the catholic school education (laughs) it must have been it must have been and no one was saying like oh you know they they were they were saying like your flower you know not like there wasn't yoni talk you know in orange county oh no no no, um, no So (laughs) what do you remember as being your sexual health education (laughs) up until that point in school? I didn't have sex ed. Abstinence. 
Yeah, I had abstinence week in mm. high school. So. <laughs> what did you do? Just go home? <laughs> do nothing. No, they like <laughs> put us in this room and they showed us pictures of STDs. And uh, they were just like, here. just don't have sex, like period. Mm. And then they made us sign a waiver saying that we would not have sex until we were married and we were saving ourselves for our husbands. And then they gave us pins that mm. said, I'm worth the wait. And I wore it proudly. <laughs> and I you know, didn't lose my virginity until later in life. So, you know. This vagina is <laughs> This vagina is closed as chit. <laughs> <laughs> this vagina is off limits. <laughs> it makes me think of the Princess Bride with her like electric undies. <laughs> Wait, no, that's not Princess Bride. That's Oh, that's... what is that? <laughs> oh my god. That's Wait, Monty what Python. Is that? <laughs> that's oh. Monty Python. <laughs> it's in the same yeah. category for me. Yeah. Chastity belt. Oh. Yeah, chastity totally. Belt. True chastity belt. Yeah, no, wow. I am my own chastity belt, man. <laughs> Calling mm -hmm. things vaginas and... <laughs> <laughs> you mean you weren't doing the camp game where you scream vagina as loud as you can? <laughs> I would never. I could never. I would honest. Okay, would you rather scream yoni or vagina out loud in a public place? For sure, vagina. <laughs> I'm endeared to that now. <laughs> vagina. Okay. I, mean, I think that's what we should do in Italy. I think we should just like show how American we are. Mr. Madison, what you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. So, I don't know. Is it good for anyone that these brands are just like Foria, Moon Juice, Love Wellness, that they're sort of like capitalizing on the yoni, <laughs> but they're not advocating for women's rights? I kind of feel like a lot of brands are in a tough spot in one sense because you're damned if you do, damned if you don't, because ultimately a lot of promises feel hollow and it's really hard to even show when those promises are actually backed up. And people aren't, for the most part, I think that interested and invested. There will always be a percentage of people who will follow things through and try and understand where that money is going. But I, there's so much pressure on corporations and brands to make up for what's lacking in rights and social services here that they're kind of in a tough spot. I still think it's important to say something. And there's always a way to figure out how to say it in your own brand voice that doesn't come off as trite. Yeah. And I was thinking as I was like looking up these brands, it's not like we go can go to their website or blog because people don't really have blogs anymore to like see a statement. And we're not, I'm not on the email list of any of these brands at this moment in time, or at least I didn't see an email from them. They could have sent something out and just not put it on social media. I don't know. I also wonder like, is it the responsibility of like brands whose primary goal is to like sell a bunch of product and be in Sephora and Target to like also be advocacy groups? I don't know. But also I kind of want them to, you know, I want them to care and like have the same values that I have. Well, I think it's one thing to market it and make it part of your brand narrative. And then it's another thing of like, how are you actually treating your employees? How do people actually feel at the company? And I think it's, ugh, it's really hard when you're working at a health and wellness company or company that espouses a very specific ethos, but isn't actually living it and walking the talk. I'm like, well, walk in the walk, like, walk in the walk. <laughs> One could also um, walk the talk, walk the talk, but they're doing a lot of lip service, but then the people who actually make the company run are not feeling supported in that way. I feel like that's where it's really about integrity. And I think you and I both have different examples of that being so rampant in the health and wellness space, Oh yeah, which is so sad and so ironic, but that's in every industry. So I don't know. It's I think I just hope for a lot of these companies that the people who make shit happen are actually taken care of. And it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell oh, if yeah. that's happening or not. You can't know. So who's this good for? Is this good for anyone? The posturing on Instagram? <laughs> yeah, or lack thereof. Maybe it's a good thing. Maybe we're tired of like seeing people have empty promises and post black squares, you know, on IG. Maybe the tide is turning. Good for no one, but bad for no one as well. Good for no one, bad for people with uteruses. Agree. They've done studies, you know, 60% of the time it works every time. That doesn't make sense. Boy, oh boy, have I got a sexy, unique scam for you. I, I think I shared this in our texts, our grext, personal mm. grext a while ago. Oh, yeah. But it's been coming up more and more. We had to hold ourselves back from looking at this last week because we were getting so it. We were animated. frothing, man. We were, yeah. we were angry. It was almost like we should hit record right now. 
So this week on deck, we have the form sciences bra and more broadly compression clothing and quote unquote scientific greenwashing. It's a broad category, but we are going to first look at this form sciences bra. And if you haven't been advertised this on Instagram, somebody, you know, definitely has because they have been spending so much money on Facebook ads recently. I pulled some crazy stats, crazy stats that I'm excited for you to see. So, okay, wait, let's talk about what the Form Sciences bra is. Oh, yes. So Form Sciences, period, is the name of the company. They have bras, leggings, shirts, apparently arch-supporting socks, and they're these garments that are supposed to be backed by an orthopedic surgeon and it says let me say developed by an orthopedic surgeon our patented technology engages muscle memory to improve the body's entire alignment forms performance wearables naturally teach the wearer's body what good posture feels like by allowing their shoulders to rotate back and downwards while opening up the chest and hips this body transformation results in increased height extended arm length accelerated (laughs) blood and oxygen flow to the muscles lungs and brain Lots of claims. <laughs> <laughs> These sort of like athletic and performance inc- improving clothing. I'm I'm steamed already. <laughs> <laughs> There's just the language, the heuristics. Where do we even begin? Where so- yeah, where does well, one also, even begin? It's like $159 for a bra. It's not. It's not. This isn't like a $20 bra for a sports like, bra. Yeah, <laughs> just for half a for half a shirt. My understanding, like most of this material comes from like three or four factories in China and the Philippines, not as much Bangladesh anymore. I will fact check that. No, that's a good point. I remember when I worked at Lululemon, the fabric that the four-way stretch Luan, Mm. Lululemon material was made like in the same place as Under Armour and these fabrics. It's like, it's all the same looms and wheels. Okay. So- We've been getting hella ads for this. We put we put it in the newsletter in the Grax, which you can sign up for the and the link in our show notes. And somebody actually replied, Shelby, mm-hmm. and they have a review. Can I read it? Oh, hell yeah. Shelby says, Hi, okay. I ordered the form bra several months ago and when I got it got to my house and I tried it on, it felt like a hundred percent a scam. Didn't help whatsoever. I returned it. Whew. So Hell yeah, <laughs> I, know, I was good like, for you yes. for returning it, Shelby. Also, <laughs> yes. that's an achievement. <laughs> Shelby also ha- makes, by the way, just like total side tangent, the most incredible jewelry. Oh, this Shelby, yes. yes. Hell okay. yeah. Let's link. Let, we'll link Shelby's sigil she makes ring, sigil, sigil signets, and they're so cool. We'll link so them in the But. Because we've been getting their ads like crazy, I was like, what's going on here? So I went to Similar Web to see how much traffic they had. Zero traffic. <laughs> so no Uh-oh. data was found, which means that there's not a significant amount of traffic going to their website. So probably like less than 20,000 views per month on their website, which I thought was really interesting because normally Similar Web will pull stuff up, which makes me think their ads are not working. And then I went to my other secret source, which is sort of an SEO AdWord site. And I found out that only 12% of their traffic is organic which means that 88% of their traffic is paid. They are spending a shit ton of money driving traffic to their website, and I do not think it's working. No. Also, because once that gets around that it's a scam and that no one likes it and that it's cheap and being... First of all, these claims are pretty outrageous. They're making claims that are pretty much dipping into the territory of just basic human motor skills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, we'll make you sit up straight. You're like, huh? Okay. We'll take credit for you being able to walk out the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the On the page that says science, there's a very suspicious lack of science. science. They have a couple studies that are like listed, but they're not linked to. And they don't say, like, they don't sum up what the studies say and if you're not trained to read like scientific papers and studies and it's really hard to understand that that type of language so really suspicious you would think that they'd want to make it easy for their users to say oh like duh these things obviously work but i'm not getting that at all from them it could be like a total oversight like oh we just don't really know what we're doing but based on how slick the website is i don't think it's an oversight i think it's like they're purposefully trying to mislead buyers well, our patented technology engages muscle memory. <laughs> I don't think I can claim that. <laughs> or that the body transformation results in increased height, extended arm length. This is insane. <laughs> yes. I also want to point out that engages muscle memory is trademarked. I can't tell if it's 
muscle memory or engage as muscle memory is trademarked, but I don't think you can trademark that because muscle memory is like, you can't trademark that. It's just a known, that's like trying to trademark femur. Like you can't, <laughs> it's just a thing. <laughs> uh, side note, the whole trademarking words business is an insane scam of sorts because oh. did you hear about that school that trademarked the? Yes, I did hear about this. I can't even. And now it, it, it becomes one of those topics that you start off small talk with at dinner. You're like, did you hear that so-and-so patented the word like happy? Well, the, the song Happy Birthday was patented for a long time. And that's why they don't sing it in movies. I know. I know. But now they can. Anyways, I feel like a lot of this language is just so like nothing, smash man, nothing, nothing. This is an example of what they say that form wearables can cure rounded back. Form wearables are designed to help cure flexible round back, correct slouching, and correct kyphosis using muscle memory engagement, trademark. The patented wire-free and sensor-free wearable technology retrains your spinal muscles for improved alignment and proprioception, elevating your performance and recovery in the process. <laughs> Okay, so proprioception, proprioception is just like your ability to be able to like move from side to side and not fall over. Like when you're old, you want to improve your proprioception so you don't fall down and break, break a hip. Like if you've ever been a personal trainer, you know, like you train people in proprioception. So when I read this, I'm like, this is just saying like we help people stand up <laughs> and move. <laughs> We help you not fall over, like effectively. I feel I feel like that's what this is saying. If they could help people get out of bed, we could all use that some days. But I don't think that this clothing is going to do that, despite what they want to lead us to believe. <laughs> I have to agree with you. I feel like this is just glorified, tight fitting clothing. And I feel like, honestly, hear me out here, but like the waist trainers that the Kardashians, <laughs> this is mm -hmm. basically like a scientific version of waist trainers. Because they're saying that, oh, using muscle memory technology, basically you put on this really tight clothing and it trains your muscles to like be in this certain alignment. Well, if waist trainers don't work to like for quote unquote muscle memory and to give you a thinner waist just by like sucking you in with compression, then how the fuck are these going to work? Hmm. It's all about this science marketing. Yeah. Scientism is the new greenwashing for sure. And exactly. I do think compression clothing works, but it has to be therapeutic compression clothing. And I've used therapeutic compression clothing before as a long distance runner and while traveling and with, you know, injuries from dance and it definitely mm -hmm. helps, but yeah. it's not going to like help me stand up, you know, or mm -hmm. like fix my scoliosis. Like that's something that you have to like go to therapy for. It's not something you can just put a bra on and be like, great, my hunchback's fixed. Like no Quasimodo, that's not how it works. No. So if you are seduced by this, avoid this scam because I believe you have some other compression clothing that you would stand by. Yeah. I think in general, you want to look for therapeutic compression clothing and it kind of depends on what you need. There's some compression clothing that's really helpful for lymphatic drainage. And if you have like varicose veins, or if you've ever like been in the hospital after surgery, sometimes you have to wear compression socks so you don't like get blood clots. There's also mm -hmm. compression clothing I think it's called 2XU that's helpful for athletes. And it basically hugs the muscles tighter on the body so that they mm -hmm. jiggle less while you're running yeah. or you're doing exercise. And that saves your energy and it can prevent injuries over time. So that's why like long distance runners will wear compression socks because it can prevent them from fatiguing. But it's not necessarily going to like make you a better athlete or like, I don't know, reverse an injury or yeah. bad form. That's not really what it does. Yeah, to your point, you can find great brands that make this stuff. Also, not for these insane prices. <laughs> I don't know. I guess the leggings are kind of similar prices to a lot of other brands, but this bra, I can't get over. The bra also is the one that annoys me the most because all of our bodies are so different. So for yeah. truly a garment, if to do what this is saying it's doing, which is like rolling your scapula back and down, which actually isn't how you get better posture, but that's a whole other story. It's saying that like it affects everyone the same way. Well, you and I are probably the same size bra, but we have very different torso lengths. We have different shoulder widths. We have different musculature. So the way that this bra is going to fall on us is going to be completely different. And yeah. it can't guarantee that it's going to help either of our postures because it might not be hitting the right parts of our body. It's just it, it, like none of this makes sense. It makes me so furious. So don't be seduced by the ads. <laughs> if you think they're stylish, get it because it's stylish, but don't right, expect right. it. 
This is another Skechers shape up. This is Skechers shape up, honestly. It's a That's modern what this shape is. Up. It's a modern shape up. Don't believe the hype. So do you stan or do you think it's a scam? Scam. 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 Ooh. We sniffed the scam. Let us know what you think. And let us know what other sexy, unique scam you're seeing and you want us to investigate. You can reply to the email in the Grex. You can send us a voice note. Also, links for both of those in the show notes because we're curious. What are you seeing? Extremely curious. Inquiring minds want to know. With that, I feel like we just like negged the shit out of a hundred brands. Let's move on to like maybe uplifting and boosting some brands that we love. It's been a while since we've mm. done a wellness house of cards. We've done some haunted cards lately, but what's in your wellness house of cards, Wallace? Kind of coincidentally, and not just after our episode with Chelsea, I have been using a lot of La Roche Posay products and their face wash and one of their sensitive moisturizers. I'll make sure to add it to our shop list, but it's been very, very very soothing to my skin. And I have to say, I was really not expecting anything for the My Topicals Slather Body Cream. And I'm obsessed with it. Really? It has truly, yeah, I'm totally a stan. Amazing. I think we're actually giving the winner a shout out this week. Also, no one submitted for the Ice Globe. <laughs> Shocking because two people DM said that they bought it and they're Guys, like, the best thing you, could DM, you could buy so. stuff, but you could also win stuff for free. <laughs> by just doing us a solid writing us a review <laughs> anyways yeah i'm really really pleased with the my topical slather lotion i love it didn't think that i would Ugh, love that because i love that brand it started by two gen they're, z they're great early I and then otherwise it might be kind of boring but notion it's really helping me plan my travels <laughs> it's also helping me stay as organized as possible while moving around so much. I love my Notion dashboard. Even if it's not perfect, it helps me. I love that. Yeah, it is really helpful for travel because I don't know, I've got like all these confirmations for all these different places and Airbnbs and hotels and I book them all at different spots. All in one place. Everything's in the Notion. And while we're on the topic of travel, this website Skip Lagged is really great for cheap flights. I've just been like perusing different flights over a few weeks and trying to just see like what are the fluctuations in prices depending on how far ahead you book or not and skip lagged is great if you're down to get on a flight and not continue the leg and you're just getting off at the stopover it's great so that's what it yeah. does basically isn't that kind of what they got known for like finding you the cheapest flight to Tokyo, but it's actually like a flight to Australia. Exactly. It's just that you get off in Tokyo. Yeah. I think that's, I cool. think that's it for now, other than this book that I'm loving and reading by Caitlin Tiffany, all about fan culture and fandom on the internet. I'll also add it to the shop list. It's so good. Just loving that book. Sick. I'm also reading. Reading is keeping me sane. I just got the Overdrive app. Oh, it's so good. You can basically you sign up and then it creates a library card for you. And I'm a huge Kindle reader, as we've talked about on this podcast, because I'm extremely competitive. I like that. Now that's your reason for being a Kindle reader because you're competitive, not because of the contest. <laughs> well, also, I love reading. <laughs> you're like, I'm just adding myself. I read to just beat you suckers. <laughs> no, I like seeing like my streak. I've read for every week for like the last year and a half or something yeah it's like wow that's surprising that's cool though that like it keeps track of your streaks anyways overdrive will make a library card for you and then you get access to libby but you also get access which is your online library portal where you can get ebooks and audiobooks for free but you can also get like canopy which is really great movies so if you download overdrive it connects all those apps and it makes it really easy you can like so literally cool. set it up in 30 seconds i'm also really into my notability app i think i've talked about it on the podcast podcast before, but I have been doing this new thing where I, in the morning, write what was the best thing that happened yesterday. And then I draw a picture of it or like take, I take a picture and I edit it or whatever. And it's just like so almost nice. like a five minute journal. It's a nice way to connect and it's all in one spot. So I don't lose it. And I'm also back on coffee, baby. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> you were off for a while. I, I was, was praying for you. Every no, day. Honestly, I feel, I feel like a new woman. I'm I'm back on the coffee train. I'm doing 
cocoa butter and coconut oil Yum. mixed into it in the blender and it is delish and then i'm drinking a giant now jeans worth of holisticism <laughs> water bottle every day as well yes. so we're back on fluids and my last thing that's keeping that's making me happy is i just bought a palette like from mm -hmm. Michael's and I mm -hmm. cut all my lipsticks off and I smashed them into the palette because I have been painting a lot and I want to be able to mix my colors together you know like I want to mix my lip colors together and just like it's so pretty to see them all smashed into a, a easy travel palette so I got a little something from Michael's for paint storage and I sm cut off all my lipsticks and I smashed them in and it's just like sparking such joy and giving me these custom lip colors which is so fun and uh, yeah genius in my wellness house of cards how did where did did you get this idea? What When were you like, <laughs> I must do this? You know, I used to have a book by Bobby Brown that was like... Was it her OG makeup book? Yes, yes. And it was like for young women. So good. So good. Oh my gosh. Yes. And I, I love her. I'm obsessed with her. And I remember she had... She, that's what she did. And I thought, oh my God, how can you ruin your lipstick? Your $30 lipstick by smashing it in there. But like, I want to use this stuff. I don't want it to just sit and like, I don't want to forget what it looks like I want to be using it all the time and like enjoying it. Right. That's the point. So yeah. I was thinking about Bobby Brown and I was like, she really approaches the face like an artist. And I think that's really yes. cool with like the way she color corrects and stuff like that and uses color theory. So since I've done my color guru and I now know my colors, I have been thinking a lot more about color theory and we actually have a code because we got so many requests for people who wanted to know wait where did you get your colors done because it was such a great experience i'm like can she hang it up <laughs> seriously it was amazing like i can't recommend it enough it's totally changed how i do my makeup like how i'm coloring my hair all that good stuff and i feel really confident but i'm fascinated by color theory so i have really been enjoying just like playing with my makeup in that way like an artist I'm now just kind of thrown back to that book. I love that so much because I remember my mom gave it to me and I remember being like, what, mom? Because a lot while growing up, she was very anti into anything aesthetic. And what I really liked about that book or what I remember is to your point, how she approached makeup as something very artistic and creative and not frivolous and shallow. And I also feel like as a businesswoman, like watching her over time, I think I saw a TikTok that she had made the other day and I was like, yo, Bobby Brown's on TikTok? Of course she is. Like talk about extremely successful businesswoman, but who has stayed relevant and finds ways to keep the brand relevant, but also somebody who I totally admire as accepting aging in a way that I feel like you don't see a lot in the beauty industry mm -hmm. and has somehow stayed true to herself and her values. Yeah. Like over the last 30 years since she started her company. Mm -hmm. She has a really good how I built this Ooh. about how she started with like five makeup lipstick colors. And that was like all they sold. All they had were lipsticks. And it was like the, these five sort of like neutral colors and how she grew her business. And then you know that she had like a 10 year non-compete because her company got acquired by maybe L'Oreal. So oh, she I couldn't make that. anything. She can't, she's not allowed to use her name. That's why her new brand is called Jones mm. Road, but she talks about it in that. Episode. Right. Which is also so good. It's really good. I have the, what the foundation, I love it. I'm obsessed. I think I'm going to get some more stuff from them because everything I've had so far, I love. What do you have that you like? Cause you're pretty picky in a good way. I like their lip balm. Mm -hmm. It has this like kind of peppermint fresh feeling. I like their crayon concealer. I forget oh, what yeah, it's called. Like the color correcting concealer? Yeah. Although you have to be really careful. You can't use it with dry skin. Like you have to be pretty moisturized. I have actually their eyeliner. Mm -hmm. They're just like black eyeliner, which I like because I feel like it stays on quite well. I'm always looking for that. I feel like my eyeliner is always running off my face. Well, it's kind of like a smudgy look. Like I like the crayon. Like if, if you're down with that, I do really like it. And then I also have a eyeshadow that is kind of a bronze sparkly powder that I'll just put in the corner of my eyes. I've only used it lightly, but I kind of like how subtle it is. Yeah. She's the queen of that. The thing I remember the most from that book is the model she used had really bushy eyebrows and she was like, don't pluck your eyebrows. Yes. Like just yes, let them She be. was ahead of her time. Mm -hmm. And I had the, I had a unibrow and I was like, Ugh, really Bobby? really <laughs> you're like this <laughs> but yeah good on this house of cards this week pretty well rounded should we announce our winner of slather oh yes our lucky winner for the my topical slather is sarah hlp 
Thank you for your awesome review. Sarah said, as someone who loves to fill a cart and abandon it and also loves splurging, it's refreshing to hear their thoughts and opinions. I also learn and laugh so much. Win-win. Thank you, Sarah, HLP. Let us know who you are. Make yourself be known on the Good For You Instagram. Just DM us and we'll send you the My Topicals slather because honestly, it's worth it. It's laughs. It's lathers. And this week, let's give away something from Jones Road because we both love it so much. Yeah. So we're going to give one very lucky winner the startup kit from Jones Road. It's their The Best Pencil, the eyeliner that Wallace loves, their cool gloss that Wallace also loves, a sparkly, mm. shimmery little eyeshadow and I think it's an eye tint there's an eye tint and then an eyeshadow hmm. so it is called the startup kit it's probably it's all of their best sellers and it's worth $68 so that's a get it's such a get this is gonna set you up so the way to win this week's giveaway is to leave us a review five stars five stars only on apple podcasts and try to do it asap because we record these episodes on monday or tuesday and we will announce our winner next week so come back and listen to the pod to see if you won thank you so much we love you thanks for listening we love you. Don't forget to submit a voice note. If you have any questions, we will link it in the show notes. Indeed. Have a great summer. Don't change. Or do. Bye. Good For You is produced by yours truly, Wallace Miller Blanchard. Our theme song is by Parallel Dance Ensemble. And our wonderful editing is done by Softer Sound Studio. You can find more information about at the link in our show notes.